level of living. So you can see what is their inherent in nature. Is it interconnectedness, self-regulation, mutual fulfillment or is it struggle, contradiction, conflict, what is there? So we'll not about the nature. So far we have explored our natural acceptance and we can see that our natural acceptance is to be in harmony as an individual, as a family, as a society. But there is another question. What is the design of nature? Is there provision in the nature or existence or living in accordance with our natural acceptance? Is it possible to live in harmony as an individual, as a family, as a society? What is there in the nature? Is it coexistence, mutual fulfillment or the very design of nature is such that there is opposition, struggle, survival of the fittest, things like this. So that remains as a question that okay we can talk all this but whether there is provision in the nature like that or not. Can we fulfill our needs without exploiting the nature? Can we fulfill our needs by, without exploiting the human being? Is it possible? So that remains as a question. If I have to take food, can I take food without exploiting the nature? Pardon? Yeah. So that may remain as a question. Because if you do not understand what plant is, what animal is, what human is, then that remains a question. If I can consume plant, why not an animal? If I can consume animal, then why not something else? <laughs> But so, <laughs> uh, we, are, we are not, exp I mean, exploitation is something different. Using the nature's resources is not wrong, but exploitation, exploitation yeah, is so wrong. So how do I decide whether I'm using it or exploiting it? As you said, want and need. So long you use the resources for needs, you are not exploiting. Yeah. If you I'll want to use to it for that, want. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to explore such issues. So the basic question is that, yes, harmony is naturally acceptable to me. But is there harmony inherent in the nature or the very design of nature is not in harmony? That is something that we have to explore, isn't it? So you can see that nature is collection of units, air, water, trees, soil, you know, so many things, metals, non-metals, planets, satellites, we are also there. How to understand all these? So one way is to classify them. So we can classify them in four orders. So one order is the physical order, where we have soil, metal, non-metal, water, air, all these things are there as physical order. Then we have plants and trees which we can club as bio-order. There is animal order where we have animals and birds. And then we are there as human order. So we can classify the nature in these four orders and we can understand them, isn't it? Now if you look at these four orders, we can see that the physical order is fulfilling the bio order, isn't it? The richer the soil, the growth is better for the plants and trees. And if the plants and trees are growing in abundance, then the soil is more fertile, water table is high, air is pure, isn't it? We have so many examples to cite here. So the bio order fulfills the physical order. The physical order fulfills the bio order. And you can see that in the nature there is a cyclicality. The plant grows from the soil, goes back to the soil. Isn't it? The minerals enter into the plants, come back to the state of minerals. Isn't it? And in this process, if you see every unit is enriched. So we can see that in these two orders, there is mutual fulfillment. There is relatedness and there is fulfillment. Isn't it? So when the plants are growing, the soil becomes more fertile. If you remove the plants, the soil becomes barren. If you look into the animal order, there also we are able to see the cyclicality and the mutual fulfillment. If you see a jungle, a forest, these three orders are there. It is very green, lush green. Isn't it? It's, it is never the case that the deer will eat so much of grass that the plants you know, are no longer there. Or the plants grow so much that the soil gets infertile. Isn't it? So there is a particular order in the nature. The deer is there and the tiger is also there. The tiger will eat the deer only to the extent that his hunger is satisfied. 
So there is already an inherent harmony in the nature when you look at the three orders. There is a mutual fulfillment among the physical order and the animal order and with the bio order. Is that true? Can you see this? Now, when you look at the animal order, when we enter into the picture, then there is a problem. <laughs> we are consuming the physical order, but we are depleting it. So many kinds of pollution, air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, plastic pollution, <clears throat> so many kinds of pollution. Why? We are ex exploiting them. There could be some you know, uh, part of nature which is very green and very you know, nice to see. The moment you make it a tourist spot, you have plastic pollution, air pollution. <laughs> Presently, there was so much of landslide in the Himalayas. Why is that so? We made it a tourist spot. So many houses being made without proper infrastructure, without proper foundation. And when there is an earthquake or something, so many people dying. Almost every two years it is happening. Why so many incidences of flood? And why people are getting drowned? We are entering into the plain of the river and making our houses and when the water table goes up then our houses are destroyed. So we are not living in harmony with them. Similarly we can see how we have been <coughs> destroying the plants and trees. Most of the forest coverage is coming down. The forest coverage in most of the states in our country is also you know, below the expected level. <coughs> If you look at the animal order, again, we are killing so many animals, birds, isn't it? Many varieties of birds are not to be seen now. Sparrows used to be a very common sight earlier. They are no longer to be seen. Mayana, Anna, I do remember. Mayana, not to be seen now. <laughs> Only you can see pigeons in the cities. Yeah. When there was lockdown in the Delhi and Sierra region, from our houses we could see the peaks of Himalayas. And there would be a you know, lot many varieties of birds coming in. But when we are moving around, not so many varieties of birds are there. And you can see the problem of poaching. Due to poaching, so many you know, animals have got extinct, kind of extinct. Why do you have to import leopard and cheetah from outside? Because we have killed them. It is said that in 1901, in India, we had about 50,000 Royal Bengal Tigers. 50,000. In 2001, they, are, they were below 1,000. And then the government made a policy, started rearing them. Now they are something around 2,000. In the name of entertainment you know, or so-called bravery, people have been killing. What is the bravery in killing with a gun? Go and fight yourself. <laughs> The other person will be killed. Yeah. So we have been destroying all these three orders. But the good thing is that if we have the right understanding, we can be much more fulfilling to them. If I'm able to see my relationship with the plants and trees, I can plant much more trees. A cow can never plant, a deer can never plant, we can plant. And we can rear more animals. There is a person in Delhi who has been making nests for birds. He has made more than 2.5 lakh nests, nests. So he goes to the schools and trains the children to make nests out of waste. There are people who have planted trees in you know, maybe 30 square kilometers. There is a person who, a book is there, the man who planted trees. He has planted trees by himself in more than 30 square kilometers. There are people who have rejuvenated the rivers. There are people who have you know, uh, rejuvenated the forest in the Sundarban area. So that possibility is there. If I am able to see my relationship with the plants and trees, with the birds and animals, we can be much more fulfilling than an animal or a plant, isn't it? But only that, if I am not giving the emphasis on this, if I am not able to see my relationship here, in the name of accumulation and indulgence, I am destroying all this. Why is there... Uh, for uh, this uh, fire in the Amazon forest for so much time. You know, we have been destroying the forest in the name of extracting more and more minerals and coal and oil reserves from beneath the forest. 
but ultimately we are suffering there is global warming the season cycle of seasons you know, have changed so many problems are acting so you can see that there are two major problems that we are facing today one is the resource depletion the coal reserve has almost and you know, is going to be over the oil reserve is going to be over now there is going to be war among nations to capture the uh, gas reserves below the oceans because the oil has got almost over and now the gases have to be extracted now people are saying that the next reserve is going to be lithium now the electric cars and electric vehicles are going to come but lithium has its own limitation it cannot be infinite so now the next phase of war could be for lithium after oil and gas so ultimately if you do not understand our needs clearly then there is going to be resource depletion and then if you are not able to treat them properly there is going to be pollution now there is something like electronic waste radioactive waste we are consuming so much of power isn't it we are sitting in buildings which are completely air conditioned and talking about sustainability you just see you know, when there are tech parks right all the buildings are like uh, packs of glasses isn't it so much of uh, electricity consumption is there throughout the day and sitting there we talk about circular economy we talk about sustainability we are not even making our houses which are sustainable can there be sustainable technologies for making houses isn't it being produced but at a very slower rate we are consuming it much much more faster way and pollution means that it does not return to the cycle in the nature and, and it is produced at a rate that is faster than the rate at which it can return to the cycle in nature either of these or both of these so for example we have produced something for example in the nuclear reactor we are converting uranium 236 to 234 or 238 to 236 that can never revert back it is a cyclic process that is one kind of pollution the nuclear waste and then we are producing plastic and things like that the single use plastic which is not going back to the you know nature the same way it takes about 10 years for the plastic to get decomposed now in noida and gaziabad in gaziabad there is a hill out of plastic waste you can see from a distance pardon we are seeing when we go to the coding campus what's that Yeah. We have one campus at here also. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That is there. Now, the another kind of hill is being tried in Noida, and the apartments are at war now. That because wherever you make it, it is going to create pollution. quantity of units in each order is in this particular manner the physical order is more than plants plants order plant is more than animals animal is more than human so the quantity is there as per the overall enrichment of the whole and availability of the sustaining resources we will also see that dependence of each order is on all the previous orders so if you look at our survival we are depend on animal order bio order physical order isn't it our survival is dependent on all the three orders so the role of human being is to ensure the enrichment protection and right utilization of the rest of nature so you have to see how we can you know ensure this when i am dependent on all these three orders for my survival i have to let them survive i have to let them you know get enriched i have to right utilize that so there is a story know that some people in a state started looking for a person who can be called as the biggest fool so they were looking for some person then they went to the forest and found that there is one person who is sitting on a branch of a tree and cutting the same branch they said that this is the biggest fool in the state hai eh, na let us bring him to the king now we as a human race are doing the same thing our survival is depend on animals if we kill all the animals then what will happen to us if we kill all the birds what will happen to us similarly if we destroy all the plants and trees what will happen to us uh 
report had come in Times of India that if someday all the insects are killed, then the human race cannot survive for more than three months. Or if all the cockroaches, lizards, henna, they are all killed, bees, then the human race cannot survive for more than three months. We are so much dependent on them. Recently, another thing happened, one research was conducted. So there was one forest in the African region which had got completely deforested. So two scientists who were working on the nature, what they did, they left some leopards there. Five to six leopards in that whole region they left. And it was found that in three years, the forest was, get, was again green, lush green. It got rejuvenated because of the leopards. People had killed the leopards for the sake of poaching or you know, entertainment. So they have such a huge role to play. So we are dependent on the physical order or the bio order and the animal order. And we are not able to see this relationship. If you are able to have a holistic vision of living, then why there would be so much of rush in the city? The cities are getting overpopulated. The villages are getting underpopulated. If you go to the villages now, you know, there are vast fields, but very few houses and very few people to you know, live there. This has become a common occurrence in many states also. In Punjab, you can see this. In Kerala also, in many places, this is happening. Maybe here also, it might be happening in Tamil Nadu. But if you can have a holistic vision of society and this understanding of nature, we can develop better ways of living. So all orders have definite conduct except human order because we do not have the right understanding. Now, in human being, the body has definite conduct. The self which is operating on assuming without knowing is the source of all the problems. So if I am not having the right understanding, right feeling, I am governed by assuming only, isn't it? Then my preconditionings. <laughs> yeah, nice question. In fact, all these questions are relevant and we do discuss all these. But one hint I can give. If you look at the animal order, we can see that self is there, body is there. In the animal order, there is a self and a body as we have. For example, if you have a puppy in the house take, and you try to train the puppy, you can train it. You first day you bring it and call it by some name, you know, whatever, X, Y, Z. It does not recognize, but you pat on the back, you provide something to it, it starts recognizing. It starts assuming that this XYZ belongs to me. But when you bring a plant in the house and call it XYZ, pat it, provide to it, it will not <laughs> act in a similar manner. So the plant doesn't have a self. The animal has a self. There's something that we can... <coughs> Take a mic. See, earth is uh, under equilibrium process among the four orders. Okay. Bio order and animal order is only converted into human order. Say it again. Bio order and animal order has been converted into human order. Our population has increased very high. Now, so that's what I wanted that's to convey. That's how we are reducing the animal order and bio order. We are facing the problem. Otherwise, the, the whole earth is in equilibration process. Unless you control that, you will not be able to avoid this. Loss of animal life as well as the loss of bio order is not possible. Because this is converted into that. Overall, if you talk about it, I will take uh, talk in terms of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. That's what we are made up of. Now, same thing, we take it from the plant, animals, everything, and then convert it into a human order. Unless you control that, you will not be able to do anything. Because everything is in, totally in one year. Some correction here. So we can see that animal order has you know, self as well as body. The same thing is not there in the bio order. The bio order does not have a self. This physical order also does not have a self. Self is the conscious entity. Okay. So one problem that is there, the human order, since it is not able to ensure right understanding, right feeling, you know, has to sustain itself by any means. So that... Sir, actually yeah. my question is, why animals are having a balanced... Uh, no, see, we, we have not seen a tiger's population has increased to 1.2 crore like that, or uh, maybe the dog's population have increased like that. But 
uh, all are living in uh, harmony so all our nature but when uh, when we call all our nature and all are in harmony why one component of the harmony is uh, not behaving in uh, uh, the same thing yeah. with the other uh, so it so happens orders, no? i would say yeah. <laughs> No, so even though we go population control that is uh, family planning etc etc uh, but still for why that problem should come no. because we have imagination see hai na so in the name of accumulation indulgence fulfilling our preconditioning or sensation we are living in a disorganized manner that's why there are so many problems isn't it the animal does not have that imagination so by the very design of nature they are self organized we we'll see that in the forest the number of tigers the number of leopards the number of deer all this is well uh, organized self organized it will not be the case that the deer increase in so such a large number that the animals the other animals are not able to survive that is not the case so there is inherent harmony in the nature but here since we have the faculty to understand we have the potential to understand and we are not able to rightly understand that's how we are in trouble and we are troubling others also so the solution is to ensure knowing understanding harmony so we are in harmony we are able to live in coexistence with us we are also able to coexist with them as you are mentioning that the food production even today is six times the requirement in india also it is more than twice the requirement but still we are not able to fulfill our need for food why because we are not in harmony we are not able to distinguish between our needs and our you know desires isn't it for the basically as a human being i want to be happy i want to fulfill the need of the self if that is not met then my conduct becomes indefinite hai na the human education sanskar is essential so going by all directions we are able to see that essentially we have to work on education process and it has to start from the family you know then it has to be there at every level of education but to do all this we need teachers we need policy makers we need parents who are able to welcome this and for that we have to have some program so that this comes into place so to sum it up there are four orders in the nature physical order bio order animal order and human order nature is a collection of units and there is a relationship of mutual fulfillment here in the nature so there is a relationship of mutual fulfillment here among the four orders the first three orders are mutually fulfilling for each other they are fulfilling for us also in fact we can see that it is naturally acceptable to us also to be in harmony with them isn't it if you do not do this then you know if you are not able to fulfill this then sometimes over evaluation sometimes under evaluation sometimes otherwise evaluation of the rest of the nature takes place like in noida you know like uh, the, there are so many stray dogs so the stray dogs would be biting the children so it was decided to keep them away from the colony so one group of people came up with a kind of order that they have to be removed from the colony then another group came up no they have to retain now these two groups are fighting each other on one night they will have candle march the first group the second night the other will have candle march <laughs> so if you are not able to relate to the dogs properly sometimes we over evaluate sometimes we under evaluate now from where did the stray dogs come we nurtured them first in the family then after some time our hobby is gone and we are leaving them as stray dogs we are not able to see our relationship with them we brought them to the human society and now we are discarding them why is that happening isn't it so we have to see how we can you know, coexist with the animals and birds for the role of human being is to realize this mutual fulfillment and for this all that we have to do is 
to understand that mutual fulfillment that is harmony is inherent in nature we do not have to create it and we have to live accordingly isn't it now this will give you enough scope to evaluate one's living are we really living the right way with the physical order with the bio order for example it is said that in one lifetime one human being requires four big trees right from birth to cremation if you look at it four big trees are required if you have the four big trees you know, and the cycle continues then our need for wood and everything is done and how many plants can we plant in a lifetime what do you think how many trees can we plant at least 10 we can do isn't it i am saying matlab it can be much more than 10 and how many trees have we grown so far in our lifetime yeah trees how many trees have we grown so four big trees are enough to fulfill our all needs you know in terms of wood and everything right from childhood to cremation and how many trees have we grown so far this is a big question we can plant at least big uh, four trees which can grow into a big tree and planting a tree doesn't mean that only on june 5 we make a on a whole plant a tree get a photograph and the job is done <laughs> <laughs> and next year we remove that and then put another yes plant. yes yes a uh, there is one college hbtu harcourt botler uh, technical institute in technical university in kanpur so the environment day was being celebrated there so when the nss coordinator had to give his speech he started saying that we have been planting trees we are planting trees we will keep on planting trees in the same pothole <laughs> here you know and so many faculty isn't it maybe 7 8000 ji initiation ka every one yeah so at least for every person in the campus we can have one big tree in and around yeah we can chalk out some occasions when we can go outside and plant you can you know look into this ji yeah no we can also look into the wetlands where we can plant trees we can look into the barren lands there might be some locations we can make it a project that we have to go there in fact a good thing is that many com- many companies under csr are doing this this is a good thing to see in many areas in rajasthan gujarat they have converted barren land into forest in tamil nadu also yeah we have a policy sir uh, i think to uh, tax or something all corporate has to go for csr Yeah. Yeah. Two percent is there. Even at the university level, we can decide that one part of the revenue has to go to fulfill the nature. Let us see how many varieties of birds are coming in the campus. Can we, you know, nest the birds? Because of the reason, we are able to get the plants from the banks and private corporate corporate companies for the industry. stand it and live accordingly and there is every provision in the nature for living in harmony with the nature so i think it is time now for lunch so we can break for lunch now we'll assemble again at 2 yeah uh, uh, animals whatever the creations in the world is born to live right so in that way we are uh, like uh, having that as our basic support to live so how do we say like we are deploying it we are uh, Yeah. So, if we identify our needs correctly, they will not consume much more than what is required. So, for for example, we need a proper coverage of land with forest. It is said probably I am not very sure, but probably 17% of land must be covered with the forest. In many states, it is below 17%, up to 10%, 9%. So, it means we have deforested a lot. and you know? similarly we are killing the birds and animals for entertainment for eating or so many ways isn't it so we are again exploiting them if i am not able to see that an animal also has a self so i am killing animals for anything isn't it this is exploiting the nature but for uh, increase in population we have to do that right 
So how do we manage this situation then? How? Why are you increasing the population so much? That is also... <laughs> See, that is not... This is our, our selection, our choice. Like, uh, that's out of our control. But uh, I'm just asking you, like, yeah. how so, it can be done? Again, it is due to lack of right understanding. You can see people begging on the roadside and there would be one parent and five to six children. So again, this is due to lack of right understanding. If you cannot support these many children, then why to procreate? And at the same time, we can see that the children that we have, are we inculcating them rightly or not? So we have to see our responsibility starting from individual to the entire existence. While fighting this much, you know, how much resources are getting wasted? Ultimately, in the areas where these wars are taking place, if you see, it has completely turned into a barren land kind of thing. All the forests are gone, buildings are demolished. You know? How much money will it take to replenish it again? Just trying to think. You know? Much more than required. US has such a vast area, 35 crore people. Is that enough or not? My survival is dependent on all these three orders. If I deplete them, if I deforest, if I cut the plants and trees, if I kill the animals, ultimately my life is going to be at stake. You just see, 30, 40 years back, there were no RO systems in the houses. You used to uh, take groundwater. Now every house has to have RO system. And now there are air purifiers also into the market. We are polluting the air this much. And for every such thing, we have to earn more and more. On one hand, we are creating artificial needs. On the other hand, we are earning more and more to fulfill the needs. Ultimately, we are feeling deprived. Nobody, nobody would have thought that we will purchase water. Yes. Water. <laughs> In the childhood, when I listened to stories like in Arabia, people purchase water, we used to wonder how it can happen. <laughs> Soon we will be purchasing air. Yes, air. yes. Pure air. If we proceed like this, we have to purchase air. In fact, we are doing by purchasing purifier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Purifier. <laughs> In Japan, there are, uh, like, as we have ATM booths, no, there are oxygen booths. Parents take their children there, and then they pump in oxygen for some time, and they pay for it. Yeah. Planning, sir. Planning, sir. Planning here also. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do not understand our harmony with the nature, we'll have to do like this. And for everything, then you have to earn more and more. It's just like creating some need which was not there, and then fulfilling it, and then you know, destroying the nature for that. Why is it required that you are going to the space for entertainment. You are paying three and a half crore rupees for a single trip of 20 minutes. How much you know, oil and gas is getting wasted away in that whole process for entertainment? Now we are depleting this planet and then trying to entertain ourselves in the sky. We are going to do the same thing in moon. If that is the case then. You know. In fact, there is one scientist, Stephen Hawking, who died now, three years back. He came to India in 2007. So he came when all the journalists interviewed him. And then one journalist asked him that, what is the problem that you see in, friend, in the face of humanity? So he named five major problems, like global warming, you know, resource depletion, climate change, nuclear warfare, genetic warfare. These five major challenges he mentioned. Then they asked him that, what is the solution that you see? So at that time, 2007, he said that, we have to do as much research as, research as possible <coughs> so that we can go to Mars by 2020. Now, can this be a viable solution? Can the whole population go to Mars? And if you go, then what will you do there? Again, start occupying land and fighting for it. Right? How we are related with the nature and we do need to understand the 